Uh, so yeah, as I mentioned, um, I can put those links also into um, Slido uh, if, if we have them, the, the recording uh, of the previous visualization um, session. So uh, just to introduce myself first, and I'll let Mina introduce herself. I'm, as Nikita said, John Banning, a solutions engineer in Austin, Texas. Okay, uh, and um, I'm Mina. I'm a developer advocate at Postman, and um, I'm excited because this is my first talk for Galaxy. So yes. <laughs> All right. So today's agenda, we're just going to quickly talk about the need and justify why visualizations exist. Um, and then I'm going to kind of do a shallow dive, not a deep dive, really, on how visualizations work, kind of the nuts and bolts. Uh, Mina will go into a demo um, on how to make a visualization, as well as then show some sample visualizations that we have in a public workspace that we'll share after the, um, the talk. So you can actually jumpstart your next visualization using um, charts, graphs, maps, maybe some HTMLs in there as well. And then Mina will wrap up with some uh, user personas of how this is useful for everyone and some tips and tricks on uh, best practices on, you know, if you get stuck using Visualizer. So, and then we'll do some Q and A as well. So why visualizations? Um, it's a good question. Uh, you know, more and more people are using APIs and more and more people are really not familiar and exposed to JavaScript or JSON objects that return uh, from REST APIs or XML or CSVs. They get that back in some unstructured or semi-structured format and they can't make heads and tails of it. So within Postman, we wanted to provide a way for users to quickly give them their own lens of how they want to view the data, be it like I said, a rendered HTML document, a map, a chart, um, some other sort of documents. Um, you know, we see people, like, as, as I mentioned, no code and low code uh, becoming more and more popular. Uh, in Postman is trying to open this, uh, this application, this platform up to 100 million users. So we want to get as many people in here as possible and make it easy for them to use. So, you know, hopefully uh, people are familiar with data visualization as becoming a new academic kind of discipline under statistics. Um, I actually have a cartography and geography background. If you can tell from the map in the background, my house is littered with maps. I'm kind of fascinated by maps. Uh, this is a one famous visualization about Napoleon's march uh, and you can by Edward Tuft. Uh, you can see like the number of troops he had going into Russia and the lack of troops coming out. As I mentioned also, there's um, disciplines and within academia on data visualization, statistics and best practices. And also, um, you know, software is becoming more and more prevalent on uh, visualizing data. Tableau, which sold for, I think, 14 or $15 billion to Salesforce is a data visualization tool built into the application. Uh, even media and websites have their own visualization uh, aspects to it. New York Times has their own data visualization team, as well as um, uh, the website by Nate uh, Silver 538 also maintains and manages tons and tons of data and provides different lenses again of visualization on how you can view the data and interpret the data. So as I mentioned, a lot of people see this unstructured, this is actually structured JSON response uh, for an ATM location application uh, API in the UK. So if you were having to QA something about this, this might be easy enough for someone who's familiar with JSON and writing tests. Um, they can interrogate to make sure a lat long's there or the name of the ATM or name of the bank it's associated with. But other people might just be better interpreting or wanting to QA to make sure the location's in the right place. So this is all done with a visualizer using a map library in the back end and plotting the actual ATM locations. And in my visualizer, you can click the, the map pen and it'll pop up some information and gives you the bank information. So it makes QA a lot easier. Humans are visualized, visual people, visual testers. They interpret visual things much faster. So why not give them a lens or how they want to view uh, the data? So now I'm going to talk really quickly about what's under the hood. Uh, within Postman on how we're doing this. So it's a transformation API that takes textual representation and lets you visualize it. So what does that really mean? So we start off with, um, depending on what app you're in, if you're using the native app, 
Uh, it was built on Electron, um, so we use a web view in there. Uh, and the new Artemis uh, web application of Postman, uh, we're using an iframe. And also, on top of that, we have different J uh, JavaScript libraries that help you render what you want. For our templating engine, we're using handlebars and also provided in the sandbox where you're visualizing our chart.js, uh, jQuery, D3, another charting and graphing uh, library, and then also Skeleton is a framework for just boilerplate uh, responsiveness on HTML elements. So that's the nuts and bolts of what's in there, but how do we put the pieces together? So all Postman really does is expose an API PM dot visualizer set and it accepts two arguments. One is a template <clears throat> and two is the actual JSON response. Uh, it doesn't have to be JSON again. It can be something else. Uh, so this lives in where you write this information is under the tests tab. I personally don't care for the name, the test tab, um, because there's so many other things you can do uh, in the test tab. Um, that's why the visualization, the visualization lives there. Um, I would love if anybody had a better name to call this tab, put it in the chat. Maybe we'll get you a pair of Postman socks if we uh, go with it. But I would like to promote the visualization to a first class citizen. So hopefully my other uh, product team hears this and maybe it'll make it happen. So again, we expose an API function uh, that accepts a template and a, uh, a data input. So if you can see my code here, I'll just Click to the next slide. Uh, sorry. You can see that, that that big block is just a template. It's a handlebars template of HTML elements, and it has a curly bracket for each or something in the response, make a table. So this is pretty easy. So again, uh, how does it work? Down here in the left hand bottom is just dealing with the response. So I can use my environmental variables or global variables and mush that with the response data and get some sort of context. That's sent over to handlebars where I use my template instructions and come up with a, uh, a template, a rendered template that is basically HTML and then that'll get inserted into uh, the body tag of an HTML. We also provide those rendering libraries. Uh, and like I said, it, depending on uh, which version you're in, if it's Electron uh, for the uh, in the web app, or I'm sorry, Electron for the uh, standalone app, or um, the iframe for the web app. And then all that kind of just flows together. And then you come up with whatever chart example uh, visualization you want. Uh, you can have a chart. You can have HTML, so there's a visualizing for uh, ratings and reviews API that I found. And then also, this is from Orist, uh, just looking at the stocks. He has a, a charting for his stocks, a visualization there. So that's a, that's a brief, you know, not too deep of an overview of, of the nuts and bolts that are in uh, the technology that Postman is using to visualize. And now I'm going to let Mina demo how we do this. Thank you, thank you, John. I'll just share Thanks. my screen. Yep. Uh, yeah, um, okay. So um, John just told us a lot of good things about visualizations. Uh, what I want to do is, uh, of course, prove John right. <laughs> and that's how I've been <laughs> doing the demo. Uh, so just to get started with uh, what John showed in the picture and the map um, looked really exciting. So just want to give it a try. Uh, so this is a collection that John has shared in this workspace. I'm just hoping I can just hit send and everything works out. Wow, uh, it doesn't. Um, so, okay, um, John says that um, the, okay. Oh, we got to select an environment, yeah. Yes. So we want to look at Barclays. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for the comment. And that's why comments help too. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, yes, I go back 
to the build yep. one. And yeah, John, you were right. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you have my, you probably don't have my API key for using Mapbox, the, the mapping tiled background, but you're seeing all the lat longs of Barclays and of the ATMs in the UK. So uh, the ATMs in the UK is an open source uh, available API for anyone to hit. They're very open about that. So you can um, find out where your nearest ATM is for different banks as well. So if you wanted to, you could actually change the environment uh, from Barclays to, I think it's Danksa Bank, yeah. and that should show up in, I think they're in Ireland. I might be wrong. Without those map tiles, yeah, you can't really see uh, what the underlying lat long is. But yeah, that's kind of, in a nutshell, the visualization. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, what I also want to do is um, just take the opportunity to try out how you uh, built it. So this is something very basic. Um, there's an um, so I hope a couple of us are familiar with the echo endpoint. Um, the echo endpoint is uh, first of all it doesn't require authentication and it's just an endpoint that echoes anything that you post to it. Uh, so it's really simple if you want to test things in Postman. Uh, or if you just want to test Postman features uh, really quickly, you can just use the Echo endpoint. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be using here. And I already have some body that I've fed into this. So, so can I just... Yeah, I love how I can play with the pains. Uh, so yeah uh, what should happen ideally is this is the same thing that i should receive as response okay um and uh, what this data essentially is it's just a couple of people and their comments and if you just look at the data um the message is just like it's just one attribute in the entire object. Uh, but for somebody who is not really interested in all of these details, they have to go through a lot uh, of the JSON. So uh, let's say I just want to display the messages. Uh, and let's let's try doing that um, in the test tab. So okay. I'm just going to start with what we need. CPM dot uh, visualizer dot set. Okay, I need a template, so I'm just going to say template, and I can provide any data. So, see, I want to provide response. I can get the response by. Okay. Um. Cool. All I just need is to create the template now. So, yeah, uh, and John said that we need a handlebars template, right? Um, so, so we need some of that handlebar syntax now that John, you might need to help me with if I screw up. So. Let's check what we actually need to display. Uh, so, okay, I have the response. Um, what I want to do is I just want to loop over each of the data objects and just display the message. So, Uh, yes, this is something that I just copied over. I'm not sure if I was sharing the handlebars tab. I just copied over from the documentation. So let's see. Response.data.data. Um, and I want to say, show me this dot message. Yeah, hopefully. 
it should be simple enough and it should work wow okay <laughs> uh what am i missing <laughs> is there a um a message element in in the json response i didn't see that just because of the screen so if you scroll a little bit i see an id a picture oh there's message okay gotcha just want to make sure that was there yeah uh probably yeah probably some... okay let me check see i knew i would do this when we're live so i <laughs> copy pasted what was working for me just so that <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. Let me try. It's still feels like the same code. Okay. Maybe I missed like a dot or something in the middle. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it's it's uh, yeah it's it's pretty simple, uh, especially when you're not live. So that's that's how you can get the visualization done. Um, if you want to focus on just few aspects. Um, if it's just a simple use case as this even, or use cases could get as complicated as you want. Yeah. Um, since we're on and since we're using this workspace, um, I just want to tell you that we're going to be sharing uh, the workspace. And um, in fact, even if we don't share it, it's public right now. So. Uh, you can just search for the workspace. It's called Sample Visualizations. And it has a couple of visualizations uh, that we have collected, a um, few of them to help you get started, um, and a few of the ones that we think um, were um, pretty different and some things that we can pick up from. Um, a lot of you uh, we know have been playing the game, uh, the Postman game. And uh, the Postman game couldn't be um as pretty or as fun if we did not have visualizations so that's that's the crossword right there that's um visualized um there's also um so there's um there's also collect so we forked these collections um and there are a couple of connection collections i think carson spoke yesterday uh so carson and her team at mtna have this covid 19 collection and it has a lot of um, endpoints which will allow you to visualize COVID data. So if um, somebody wants to study it, identify patterns, then um, this is something that you could also do with this. And I'll just yeah, I'll move back to the presentation. And I want to give a shout out to Mina, who developed the crossword puzzle in the word finder. Um, she presented that a week before the galaxy and everybody was in, very impressed and spent, you know, occupied an hour of our time just playing with the game and, and, and you know, finding little things to make it better. But it is it's fun stuff. So that's available again for everyone out there in the public to download and make your own crossword or see how the visual visualizer works. Yeah, that's. Uh that's that's all that's all teamwork because a lot of people actually fork the collection before we um took it on to the public workspace and a lot of people did contribute to uh different parts of it and helping us find bugs so oops I shouldn't have just presented from the beginning. <laughs> OK, so we've been through the demo. We've had a walkthrough of how to use the visualizer. 
and we've looked at a few sample visualizations, all of which you all can have access to um, after this talk as well, and even right now as the talk is going on. If you uh, don't want to listen to us and just want to start by just poking and getting ahead, then do that. That's fine. Um, Moving on, um, what we want to emphasize on is that when we thought about visualizations, uh, we had like certain user personas that we thought of and how this might be useful to people. Uh, so the COVID collection that we just saw um, would be useful for somebody who is a data scientist um, who deals with data throughout their day and um, who have to find out like facts from the data. So that's, um, that's useful for them. Uh, then, for example, if you already have an API and let's say a designer wants to look through um, what is the available data that the API is returning and something that could help them or maybe they could try out things that they want to design. Um, and um, similarly, a data engineer would be somebody who wants to transform the data, move the data, analyze the data. and um, in the post scripts, like in the test tab, um, they could filter the data and they could transform it and they could display it in the visualizer for anyone else who might find that useful. Um, and um, so uh, Matt, who just spoke before us, um, Matt had also done a demo for one of our customers uh, where he actually had um, a lot of, um, oh, I can go back, oh yeah. OK, so this, this is part of Matt's demo. So this is almost like the entire website of the customer in the visualizer. And how Matt thought this could be useful was um, if the request body is too complicated to, for something, um, and it's really complex for somebody to actually create the request body, um, they could just click on things um, in the visualizer. And that's how they could create the request body for the next request. So that's also some place where the visualizer could be useful. Yeah, um, just uh, concluding, there are certain tips and tricks um, that we want to leave you with. Um, in case um, you have any issues with the visualizer, um, feel free, if you're on web, use the developer tools. Um, and um, if you're on the app, um, what you can do is just right click the visualization and just inspect and you're going to see the console that's going to help you out with um, any errors or um, anything that you want to try out and test and figure out what's going wrong. Yeah, uh, so some resources that could help you out is the learning center, um, the community forum, community.postman, a lot of questions get answered there. Um, and you can help people answer questions. Um, for those of y'all who want to try out, of course, you should try out public workspace, especially after what Matt shared with us in the previous talk. So you might want to check that out. And we're done. Great. Right. Um, meanwhile, did yeah. you, did you yeah, have some questions that we'd like to I did, I did find some questions and some comments. Um, I know Scott Hicks asked, is there any way to separate the regular test assertions and the visualizations in the test tab? Or is it best practice to only one or the other at a single request? Scott, uh, it's a great question. The visualization component of Postman was kind of a add-on. One of our developers uh, just thought like, hey, as I mentioned, uh, JSON is not the best for my eyes. I just want to inspect it some other way. So they went off and kind of did a solo project and figured this out. And it just happened to live in the test tab. As you know, um, like in a request lifecycle, uh, you make the pre-request uh, tab is is worked on and rendered that JavaScript, and then the request happens, and then the test tab happens. Some people call it the post request, uh, and that's where the the visualization engine works from. So it needs that response to come back because that's one of the inputs. I'm a huge proponent of let's break this out into its another tab. It's not to say that I want to mess up the already I don't know kind of crowded Postman UI, but I would like to have a, to promote visualization to a first class citizen, if you will. So um, yeah, I'd hope I'll a feature, create a feature request. And it seems like a lot of people on this, in this forum and, and also have the same thoughts. Yeah. Um, also, yeah. I just want to add on also what you could do is uh, sometimes it, it helps just forking a collection for different purposes. So if you want to focus on the visualization aspect, 
uh, you could just have a fork and like you know you could have the visualization the test tab and if you want to use another another fork uh, just fo to focus on the testing part uh, you could do that i think i'd prefer that rather than mixing the two so yeah uh, Dylan Clayton asks, so this picks out specific things from the JSON response. This is useful because I had to do some data science and split make lists. And where did it go? Hang on. Um, yeah, Dylan, that's what it does. You can do any processing in the test tab if you need to just specify um, a certain section of the response or you need to do some data massaging or calculate different values. Uh, and Matt's example, or one of them, we had a shipping date. You needed to add 14 days to a date time that came back. You could do that and then show that. Um, yeah, so you can actually, any any JavaScript manipulation you need to do uh, before you render it, it's all available. Um, and I saw one more I was going to reply to. Uh, is there any way to separate test assertions and visualizations in the test? Oh, we read that one, didn't we? Um, yep. John, be... there is a question that I kind of like it. Okay, I'd okay. like to ask you guys. Uh, Juan Trevino asked, uh, can someone help me understand if Visualizer is more for staging environment to validate API responses? Seems like partial duplicate effort if data is displayed on a web page. He's just trying to basically catch up <laughs> with coffee. <laughs> It's uh, early morning. <laughs> it's just really to visualizer. Is it's a it's a good uh, one stop kind of UI or an IDE where if you were making your front end developer and you're having to consume an API call, maybe I could pull my HTML that's going to be out on the front front uh, UI front page, uh, so I can just do it in the app where I don't have to you know go back and forth between two different two different environments. It's not really production or environment based, it's, it can be both. You can actually make an API call to the production environment or, and or the development and it should render the same or you could have two different visualizations. So I hope that helps. Yeah, I guess, yeah, it depends. It kind of depends more on the use case um, rather than like, you know, environment specific. So um, it's just whatever, whatever you feel that, um, is, is worth visualizing and it would help, definitely help somebody out there to use that. Um, anybody on your team, if it's something that makes your work like get easier, then it could probably be something on pre-production. If it's something that can visualize the APIs that have already released on production, then anybody can go ahead and like, you know, just visualize the APIs. Personally, what I'd love to do is have a public workspace of um, all of the visualizations that I create and it could be like, um, my profile for, um, I don't know, front end code or like pretty stuff that I can do. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Max loved the crossword puzzle visualization and he was asking if there's a tutorial, how it was constructed. Uh, Max, I would suggest forking our public workspace and digging into the code. Um, and then, uh, make a pull request on that, um, the key to move up and down and we'll put it back into the, uh, the crossword. Yeah. More people that can fork the visualization and contribute to our visualization community that you, you all are now are part of would be great. So, yeah. Yeah. You could, you could also try forking it. And, um, so uh, most of the code that's, um, in the visualization is already available in the test tab. So if you can just check it out and if you probably get the hang of it and would like to make a tutorial out of it, that also uses the visualizer, that'll be awesome. All right, would you guys like to answer some more questions or should we wrap it up here? Oh, uh, I can keep answering. I think Scott asked about, does visualization work with XML responses? I believe handlebars does. It's just really your parsing your response. Um, so it should work with XML. I do we have any examples within the visualization public workspace that have XML examples? I mean, that might be worthwhile to do. Yeah, I, I think I think there are a couple of uh, templates that should be there in the search. CSV, XML, JSON, I think I've seen. You know what? I know Orist, uh, when I, in the beginning of the uh, demonstration or the talk, uh, he's recorded his already and presented it. He um, actually deals with XPath and XML, so I believe uh, you could probably fork his public workspace and see how he's working with XML as response. Yeah, the, the XPath one, we fork that. So that's also part of the visualizations workspace. 
More questions? Uh, we're going through. I think we got most of them, or someone on our staff has replied. Oh, there was the one question about how to, I guess, utilize the visualization outside uh, within their client app. I was thinking, because all the visualization code lives in the collection, you could back up that collection into GitHub or whatever source repository you want, and then you obtain it from that way to use in your own client app. I think that was Tom Rosenberg who asked that. Um, I'm happy to talk to you. Uh, you know, just hit me up later in the day in uh, in Hopin, and we we can try to do a demo or, or show that how that would work. All right. This last question, if you guys have the time, it just came in. Can we embed? Sorry, I just lost it. Can we embed a vis visualization in a web page? That's uh, you. You can't uh, you obtain a URL for the visualization. I think there's a feature request for that because people just want to kind of pull that down. I think that's what Andrew's asking. Um, but yeah. another workaround, I guess, would be to because all that visualization code lives within your collection. If you're backing that up to GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever repo is, you could potentially pull it from there into your web page. And, and that's what I was talking about when I tried to answer um, Tom's question. That's something maybe I can do as a, as a proof of concept to show how that could be done. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mina. Thank you so much, John, for visualizing it and uh, public workspaces and going into public workspaces and finding our sample visualization collection. This stage has sort of come together in its in a way. And thank you so much for that. And like John said, so we have an expo hall. Uh, we have a postman booth over there. Just hop in there, ask us questions, and we can do some live demos for you. And lastly, we do have a survey under the poll section. Just let us know how did we do on this session. Uh, thanking both of you again. Uh, thank you so much.